Welcome in to Drew's Daily Diamond for Monday, October 28th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. It is college football opening line report edition here where we are looking at some of the opening lines, both sides and totals for the week 10 slate here. We'll be going uh, down pretty much in, in the order of kickoff for the Saturday games, maybe a, a weekday game if we have time. But let me know in the comments below. Uh, where you agree, where you disagree, what lines you think are going to move. Uh, if you're up against me and you think it's going the other way, please let me know. Uh, all about trying to become smarter betters here on this show. This is the second edition of Opening Line Report. So uh, looking to keep it going here, guys. Uh, pretty successful show last Monday. So here we go. 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific for the first game. We are heading up to Syracuse, New York for Virginia Tech, the Hokies, at the Syracuse Orange, 53 and a hook being the total. Does look here Monday, uh, about 12 noon uh, Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. It is Virginia Tech minus four as the road favorite. The Hokies come in five and three, both straight up and against the spread. Syracuse, five and two on the season. They also have extra preparation time. They played last Thursday against the Pitt Panthers. The problem with that is I know they're at home with extra preparation time, but they just looked awful last Thursday night against Pitt. You might remember that game. They lost it 41 to 13. Their quarterback, Kyle McCord, I know he's a good player, highly recruited guy, the transfer, but 35 of 64, zero touchdowns and five interceptions. One thing I noticed is he looked like a deer in headlights. You know, it starting probably about the second quarter of that game. It was almost one of those situations where it was like, man, I, I cause I bet the over, I was kind of hoping they would they would take him out, put in the backup quarterback, just because you could see he wasn't going to regain it. The Pittsburgh defensive line was giving him all kinds of problems. And that's the matchup I think the market's going to be in tune to here because now he's up against Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech's defensive line has been playing well. Ten sacks the last three games. And this Hokie squad, they've won three straight. They've covered four straight. The only game they didn't win outright was that game against Miami, you right, might remember, um, and down in Hard Rock Stadium, they really kind of should have won that game towards the end. They lost at 38-34, co covered the 17 and a hook comfortably. So they've been covering numbers here. Um, they are the minus four favorite on the road. But still, I think the Hokies are going to take money to kick us off on Saturday. So if you like the Virginia Tech side, get on it sooner or than later. I don't think minus four flat hangs around long, guys. We'll head uh, down the list here, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific in Orlando, Florida. It's Arizona and UCF. Big 12 conference battle between two, three, and five teams. 55 and a half or 56 being the total. We are seeing UCF minus six or minus six and a half as the home favorite. I don't have much sidewise. I think it's kind of a difficult hand handicap. UCF in particular, I think they're a very volatile team. I do think they're better than the record shows, but at the same time, they just... Their defense is not very good, and it kind of leads me into, for the opening line report, where I think this line is moving, and that is over. I think this game gets into the 60s, guys. I think the market is going to push this up. We've already seen a little bit of over money. So Arizona, UCF, if you like this over, grab that 55 and a half. UCF has hit six of their first eight games to the over and two straight overs. By more than 30 points combined above the closing line, meaning, you know, the total is X. Well, they're scoring 30 more points than X in their last two combined. They're the top 20 in terms of pace of play, seconds per snap. And here's what I love is the change with Arizona. Because if you go by their full season metrics, they're kind of like middle of the pack pace of play. But their last three games, they've really upped the pace. They're, they're, they're going 24 seconds in between snap. That would be top 10 in the country. So when you find these teams that are changing something as a sports better, change, in my opinion, is the best way to win in this business. Arizona's done that in their offensive scheme. Brent Brennan, you know, he's a guy that's coached him up on the offense uh, for multiple seasons. What, all the way back to San Jose, San Jose State days. And he's up against Gus Malzahn. Both of these Two head coaches are going to look to punch it in, you know, go for it on fourth down. Um, and lastly here, kind of the matchup is Arizona's let up over 145 yards rushing in four straight games. They just let up over 200 yards rushing to West Virginia. Now they're going up against the top five rushing attack in the country in UCF. 
UCF's going to go up and down the field. I think Arizona is as well, guys. This is uh, end zone to end zone here. This gets into the 60s and beyond, in my opinion. I think the market's going to be in tune to it. 55 and a half. I don't think that lasts long. It looks like 80 degrees, mostly sunny in Central Florida on Saturday. Arizona, UCF, this is going to take over money, in my opinion, guys. Moving down the list here, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific, another one. Baylor hosting TCU. Baylor minus three. I don't think that lasts very long, guys. 64 and a half being the total. I think Baylor's going to take money throughout the week. TCU's five and three straight up, but just two and six against the number. They've been burning money. And Baylor's just four and four, but they've been playing a lot better football. They've won five of their eight against the spread. They've won two straight, covering both games by 27 points combined against the closing point spread. So they've been underpriced. They just ran for almost 350 yards. Their quarterback, Sawyer Robinson, he's playing good football. Three touchdowns last week against Oklahoma State. It was their first Big 12 home win in like two years. So I think they're actually going to double that year. And this minus three, I don't think it lasts long, guys. I think it ticks to three and a half, four. It, it could go even higher because TCU, like I said, they've been burning money. Sonny Dykes, you know, at, at some point, I think he turns it around. They did get that come from behind win over Texas Tech. But when you look at their schedule, it was Utah. Utah's banged up without their quarterback. They only scored 13 points. They lost to Houston. Houston's kind of had a rough season. Uh, they played Kansas before that, and then they let up like over 60 points to SMU. I think Baylor's going to score a bunch of points here. Um, I think they take money throughout the week, guys. So it's the Baylor Bears minus three. I think this number moves throughout the week. A couple games left. A big one here. We're going cocktailing. Florida and Georgia. Georgia minus 16, 52 being the total. I know the presidents of the university have asked people not to call it it, but it's just too good of a name. The world's largest outdoor cocktail party. With the Florida Gators coming in four and three, both straight up and against the spread on the season. And the Georgia Bulldogs, six and one straight up. However, just two and five against the spread. This Georgia team, I mean, a, a obviously very talented team in the national championship picture, no doubt about it. But they flat out just don't cover big numbers. For whatever reason, this guy, th this season, off of the big win over Texas two weeks ago, Oh, first off, both teams off of a bye week. So I don't know. Well, we'll get into actually who, 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 whose advantage that is. But do want to go over the Georgia profile here. Georgia's 0-5 against the spread. Their last five is a favorite. Keep in mind, they, they, they went off as the underdog against Texas, beating them two weeks ago. They're also going back to last year, just 2-7 and seven ATS as a favorite. So, you know, Kirby Smart, he comes from that Nick Saban coaching tree. They don't really look to cover numbers, just kind of grind you out and beat you. And asking them to lay 16 here, guys, we've already seen the market. It was 17 and a half. Now it's down to 16. I think it might keep going. I don't, I, I mean, I don't think it's going to go past 17, you know, the bounce back. Um, so I would look to get on the Florida Gators if, if you're looking to, to watch the the largest outdoor cocktail party. I, I would go with the dog here, guys, and grab the 16 sooner than sooner than later. Florida's covered four straight by almost 60 against the spread points. And, and people talk about, you know, Billy Napier on the hot seat. They are being underpriced. One of the most underpriced teams over the last month. I mean, 57 against the spread points better than what the odds makers are pricing them at the last month, covering four straight. Part of the reason being their quarterback, DJ Lagway, uh, one of the highest recruited guys last year, Graham Mertz is out. So this offense has seen a spark. You know, they just put up like uh, over 45 points against Kentucky. DJ Lagway had five passes, more than 40 yards. Now, I don't think he's going to be able to replicate that against Georgia, but still, they're going to be able to get a spark, in my opinion. And talking about the bye week and who that might help. Billy Napier, you know, off of a bye has been really good. It, it, this is both of these teams' second bye week of the season. And Florida's first bye week, they won outright the next game as an underdog by double digits over UCF. Whereas Georgia, in their first bye week, they lost outright as the favorite to Alabama. So just wanted to throw that out there in terms of like recently between these two head coaches and the two teams off of a bye week, who it helps the extra preparation time. I think it helps Florida more than it helps Georgia. Um, plus 16, this is a big number. Georgia hasn't covered big numbers all year, uh, going back like a, a calendar year now. So 
I think the Gators plus 16, I think they take money. I think this touches, you know, 15, 14 and a hook, something like that by kickoff. So, uh, yeah, I think the Gators take money in the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Got one more on Saturday and also going to hit one of the weekday games as well. We get Pitt and SMU. 8 p.m. Eastern time. This is a big one in the ACC. I mean, SMU 7-1, and one, Pitt 7-0 and oh for the first time since like the early 80s, I believe. They're also 6-1 and one against the spread. SMU, they've been good against the spread as well, 5-3 and three and 7-1 and one straight up. Some question marks here with both quarterbacks, Eli Holston and uh, SMU's quarterback Jennings. They're both on, on the injured list, but I, I do think both of them are going to play. Jennings, he actually came back against Duke and Holstein. I I saw Pat Narduzzi mention he should be fine and ready to rock. He was in high spirits. So I would expect both of them to play. SMU just went off of three straight road games. They did have a bye like three weeks ago, but the last two, they were out at Stanford. So they went out to California and just last week at Duke and they went to overtime against Duke, 28-27. You might have missed that game this past Saturday. They did, they did not look very good. Now, maybe it's a look-ahead spot. you got to give them credit for that. But they've re- one matchup that I think the market's going to start to come in tune to is SMU, if you look at their schedule, and this happens with some Big 12 conference teams, really all college football teams, um, they've only played two – good defenses like top 50 ranked you know in terms of yards per play against it was duke and it was byu duke took them to overtime and byu they actually lost to byu that was their one loss they only scored 15 points now they're going up against Pitt, who is a top 10 team in terms of yards per play against so they're going up against another good defense here they struggled against both of the good defenses they played before I think this is something to watch, guys. I don't think this SMU offense, you know, Rhett Lashley's a Gus Malzahn disciple. When they get it rolling, it really rolls. You know, they they, they score a bunch of points. But when they struggle, you know, it's almost like an option attack. When the defense figures it out, it just doesn't work anymore. I think Pitt's going to figure it out here, guys. Um, I I look towards the Panthers. Plus, Pat Pat Narduzzi's 10-2 and off of a bye. If you know anything about Pat Narduzzi, extra preparation time, he gets his teams ready to play. Now, this isn't going to count towards that 10-2 and record because it's not a full bye week. However, it is extra preparation time. They played on Thursday. Just something, you know, to have in the back pocket. And that that big win over Syracuse, that's the last thing people remember, you know, and that that was a primetime Thursday night game on ESPN. So I think more people are going to be betting Pitt as the – as the week goes on and it's the Pitt Panthers plus seven and a half. It's available at uh, at multiple sports books here. As I'm looking at the wager talk live odd screen, both in Las Vegas and offshore. So plus seven and a hook. I don't think that lasts long guys. I think this closes seven, maybe even six and a half. So uh, if you like the Panthers uh, with those reasons, uh, I would grab that seven in the hook with, uh, with Pitt. That's going to do it for the Saturday games, guys. But do want to talk about uh, one one weekday game that I actually brought, uh, broke down. And I think uh, this line's going to actually move. But uh, reminder, if you could comment below, it helps out the algorithm. Let me know uh, if you agree, if you disagree, what you what you think is going to move. You know, there's, what, 60 games in college football. I can't cover them all, guys. Uh, plus, want to keep it under, what, 15, 20 minutes here. So uh, definitely going to miss some, but try to become smarter, better. So let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in premium picks, check them out. Drew Martin, wagertalk.com. Got a 5% max limit going here for week 10 college football up and available. And also, if you're watching live, you're watching on Monday, got a free play. Uh, You can go read that at the uh, Wager Talk free play page on game three of the World Series tonight. All right, let's talk one weekday action here, guys. Jacksonville State and Liberty. This is uh, Conference USA Wednesday night. I think this number is going to move. I really do, guys. Um, 7 p.m. nationally televised game. Jacksonville State comes in four and three. Liberty off of a loss against Kennesaw State at five and one. They're laying one and a hook here. 62 and a half, 63 being the total. Liberty is a team that has been playing with fire all season. They're five and one straight up and just one in five against the spread. You normally don't see that in college football. We talked about it with Georgia. They fit that profile. They just don't cover numbers. 
And they're also four and two to the over. I do like the over in this game. I think it takes money. But also sidewise, Jacksonville State's playing a lot better football. They've won and covered four straight games. They're five and two to the over as well. There's probably going to be a lot of points. Um, Jacksonville State scored 40 plus in four straight games. They've scored over 200 points in their last four games. They're top 10 in the country in terms of pace of play. If they get it rolling, Liberty's going to have a tough time here. Now, you could give Liberty the credit, you know, a look ahead spot here towards this Jacksonville State game. That's the reason they lost to Kennesaw State. I, I, yeah, that's probably part of it, but losing to Kennesaw State is a game changer, guys. That Kennesaw State offense couldn't do anything against anybody. And then they go in and score, what, 27 points against Liberty? I think Jacksonville State's going to run it up on Liberty. And they've actually let up, talking about the Liberty defense, 24-plus points in three straight games. And look at the three games that they played. Kennesaw State, FIU, and East Carolina. This Jacksonville State team is going gonna, is gonna to be able to put up a lot of points here. Catching one and a half. And this is an interesting line move in itself. Jacksonville State was catching one. Or wait, wait. No, they actually went off as the minus one favorite. Circa opened the lines, and then it moved to Liberty minus one and a half, and that's how I'm doing the show. I think it's actually going to have a reverse line move here because I think, you know, going into the college football betting markets early in the week, it's a lot of just, you know, professional bettors, bigger bettors going in and and just betting their power numbers, which they're going to say, oh, Liberty was a look-ahead spot. They're still power rated ahead of Jacksonville State. And then as the week moves on, it's more guys like me watching the games and then handicapping the matchup. And that tends to move the market in the middle of the week. That's why I think Jacksonville State's going to take money here, guys. I think Jacksonville State wins this game. I think wrong team's favored. And I don't think Liberty is as good as a lot of people say they are. I think it's kind of like last year they ran the table and they're kind of running it over to this year. So wanted to throw that one out there. I think Jacksonville State, I know it's kind of off the radar, but it is Wednesday night. Those games take a lot of tickets. So I think Jacksonville State's going to take money. I think there's a lot of points scored in this game. So, guys, that's going to do it for college football. Opening line report week 10. Looking to keep this going next, next week uh, uh, throughout the season. If you guys like it, let me know in the comments below. If not, uh, we'll go back to just uh, breaking down the games. But uh, – Either way, we'll be back on Tuesday. Come back and join us. We'll get that show out early. I'm going to do that in the overnight market. And feel free to fire away any questions, guys. Happy to answer them on the show this week. Have a little question and answer time. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Please smash that like button, comment below, and we'll talk tomorrow. Cash those tickets.